Uh, hello there. Hello there. Oh, hey, dude. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Sorry, I'm just busy reading about tits. That's birds, by the way. <laughs> what? Yes. What I'm the frack? Group jokes right out of the gate. I'm so, nice. so I'm such an immature person. I'm sorry. You are. This cool. Really are. Really into cool. birds now. That is cool. Well, how you doing, man? It's time for another show. It's time for another week's end. Yeah. Yes. I'm excited about this one, man. We got we. I I don't know if we can keep this to thirty. We got a lot to talk about. There's a lot. I don't think we can. Stuff. I think it's going to be the week's end super mega super mega awesome power, power hour. hour. Right. And I think that we should just say say hello to all of our tens of viewers yes, whether sure. they're in a city possible yep. in the country possible true, at true. the beach also possible likely uh where else could they be in a tree fort maybe 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 um on the grid on with the kevin grid. flynn our lord and savior also about, possible. How about in the cloud in the cloud yep uh, on the hyper global mega net, but anyway, man, happy Friday! Here's to yes, you. Yes, sir. Cheers. Uh, I'm drinking out of this fancy virtual. Let's club. let's do a virtual glass clink here. Here we go. One, two, three. To Friday. Oh, that was really nice. To weeks in. Yes. Wait, let's do it again, and I'll do it with a sound effect. You ready? All right, here we here go. We go. One, two, one, two, three. three. Bing. No, it's, yeah, I, it didn't quite work. I tried to yeah. hit a can, but it, yeah, there we go. All right. all right, I'm drinking a juicy IPA Hoptastic from White Street Brewing, brewed with. Uh, Carolina craftsmanship right here in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Oh, Carolina. I'm drinking a Down East original blend uh, unfiltered craft cider. Nice. Um, I don't know if the word craft really needs to be in there as much as people True. want to use it. It's kind of like artisan. Like, just relax. It's fucking bread. Like, you're fine. It's, it's bespoke or bespoke yeah. or bespoke. Well, bespoke, bespoke. is like Bespoke custom. is not a word, I don't think. But I don't know. It kind of looks like, um, I don't know. It doesn't look like cider, but it tastes great. It looks like it looks like Tang or something. Mm. It looks like Tang. Yeah. The drink right, of everybody. astronauts. We're going to get into it here, folks. We've already burned up two minutes. Just yeah, we have. Shooting we're just, the shit. We're, we are wasting your time. We I want you to know. Wasting everyone's time. Take your time to look at the ocean or the trees or your office window like I do all day, seven days a week, and realize yeah. that we're wasting your time. That's what we're here for. We're here to waste your time. Ryan, what's on deck for today? I bet we have a lot to talk about. We do, we do. But I first, I feel like we have to start with Star Trek because uh, I love Star Trek. Oh, I don't love that part. Have been closed, folks. Um, I don't, I don't want to be corny or even glib about this. Uh, no, I don't either. Yahura, uh, Michelle Nichols, who played this pivotal, pivotal part on uh, the original series of Star Uhura. Trek, has passed That's away this fine. week. She has um, an incredible legacy, a wonderful woman, a great actress, actor. I don't know what we're supposed to say these days. But anyway, uh, I always think of her as, yeah, Commander Uhura, right? Yes. Where, where, well, I think she may still be lieutenant there. I don't really know how to read the pips. But I, my favorite part, my favorite uh, Star Trek movie of hers, including the shows and everything, is when she was in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. One of my favorite movies. Uh, Nicholas yep. Meyer, I know you're watching. You watch <laughs> us every week. Uh, you're one of my favorite people to talk to on Twitter. And uh, obviously he made Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Uh, it must have been such a joy to have an opportunity to work with her. She is a trailblazer. Um, did a lot of great work with NASA. Was a philanthropist. You know, she was just a she was just a leader in everything she did throughout her career. I've never seen that picture. And that's damn amazing. Sexy, Look damn at that. sexy doing it. Yes. Yes. Look at this shot that we oh, found. Uh, I this love was this uh, one. This is uh, Leonard Nimoy's son tweeted out this picture of uh, his father and Nichelle on set. Yeah, having a moment. I love that. I thought that so, was cool. You can really see, cool. You can see Captain Kirk there in the background, William yep. Shatner. But I, just, oh, and I think that that's, no, no, no. But I just love that picture. I just, I just, and I love how they're in their uniforms. Yeah. There's just stuff everywhere, you know, which is, of course, the reality of any set. You don't know. Oh, look at that. This there is she a is cool in Mission picture. Control, the flight director. Yeah. And, wow. and it, I think we should take a moment for, there's a documentary about her work that you can watch on, on a streaming service now. But um, most folks probably that just know her from the show, 
and that's all they know her from don't know about all the work that she did you know literally starting in the 70s um through the prime of her career she worked to try to recruit astronauts during the era leading up to the shuttle sort of the shuttle phase of nasa that's um, awesome. when it when it was harder to recruit and uh she wanted representation obviously you know who else sat at that desk at that very desk my boy, my best friend, Gene Krantz, legendary flight director. You know, my boy. I Gene know, I there. know. And he was like, failure's not an option, smoking butts. <laughs> you just know it. Well, speaking of Star Trek, um, I wanted to make a pivot to uh, talk about GalaxyCon because two things. One. Let me hear I, about it. I saw some of your people. I know th that is a beautiful group of nerds right there. We I, had we had the I respect representation, all of that. Yeah, representation from uh, the USS Kitty Hawk, uh, Starfleet. Awesome. What do you call what do you call these groups? Are they are they called starships or or um, how do, how do, I don't even know the designation. It, de it 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 depends on what purpose they serve. If they're a meetup, it's just a group. But there are starships groups. I don't really know what you call them either, but then there's a whole thing. There's like a whole, I don't know if you know this, but there's a whole like party subculture to this stuff that happens. Oh, in, I know about the party where they subculture. take out like whole floors of rooms and do all this crazy stuff. Um, wow. That's there was pretty, a lot going on. There was a lot going on here. There is a, Oh, what's that in the background? Is that like some sort of, oh, well, they had a whole lounge set up, Look, there, but there's like a remote control car or something. Oh yeah, there was a lot going on. They had a so they had a Star Wars lounge. They had a Star That's Trek cool. lounge. Um, I, I respect you, my peeps. Here was the thing when when the news of Nichelle's passing kind of broke on social media Sunday afternoon. It was literally minutes after William Shatner left the stage from being at this event. Oh man, and I didn't know had, that. He had sat down with our governor. There's like our governor tweeted out that he met his childhood hero. And they talk shop behind stage and all this cool stuff. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, like, I bad timing, but it was, you know, it must have been heartbreaking to be on the road and, and sort of get that kind of news as well, right? Yeah, that's a bummer. It is. It is. But it was it was a really cool con. Um, so much Eddie Munson cosplay. I, well, I, but, I'm that, just, but that's the popular thing, man. Hellfire I, Club, baby. Look, I mean, that's I'm going to tell you, whoever is making the Hellfire Club t-shirts is making a fucking killing because oh, absolutely I, that's the I, second I time say, you've swore like, in the show everybody everybody and their mom and i you know here's my theory everybody has been hanging on to their acid wash jeans and their everything in their closet so very easy to break out the old pins and the the acid wash um i i this was wow. a fun event so, so i got a couple things a couple things to show you that are going to make you giggle here okay um there I like was giggling. giggling's fun there was some cool cosplay, first of all. So wow. different, different contests every day. That's um, impressive. These, these folks were uh, from the Green Lantern Corps. Wow. They won, they won something, the, uh, the one of the first nights. I went Friday night and Saturday and then Saturday night. Um, so they had like different levels of competition, of course. Um, I, love, I, cool. I like the teleprompter on the right. Very, very long. Now, now check know. this out. I got accosted on my way in. Uh-huh by a couple of siths and uh they didn't like they didn't like me because i think they detect so i don't know i i need to zoom in here i don't know if you can see this but i am like dressed up in my hawkins high school t-shirt and i see that my whole thing was i was hawkins high pta dad jim hopper like casual jim hopper uh-huh uh, so they were obviously in casual jim me. hopper they were interrogating me because they could detect that i had been around a force sensitive child 11 oh. and so the second sister from from uh you know the, wow, that the video is game and, and nerdy mr anakin there i don't know I, it, it might be a stretch but but they were not amused they there was force holy oh, shit that's funny there was there was a lot going on by the way i'd like to i'd like to just congratulate you on your incredible acting in that last yes. photo you were right right really worthy of i don't know what award I don't know what either, but I will tell you what is where the Vecna won best in show on Saturday wow, night. Oh, that is a good It was Vecna. legit creepy. This photo doesn't do it justice, but I've got a couple of shots where if you're like looking up close, like 
there's not slime like oozing out of his neck, but uh, it was definitely enough to make you like turn the other way and run. That's you know, dude. I I guess my thing is like I just really appreciate the commitment, the time, the effort, the money. Like oh these gosh. people work really, really hard on the. Ah, oh, that's awesome, Joker so talking much. to Batman. They're just having like a Mountain Dew moment, but so I just much. appreciate. Like I wish I had the time for that. Someday I want to do something awesome. Like maybe I don't know. Well, no, my joke here was I didn't want Batman to drink the Smilex soda, man. He might, he might, you know, come out with a death smile. That's true. Uh, 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 that's Don't a deep worry, cut. But check this soda. out. This is one of the ones I wanted to show because not only were there a ton of Spider-Man and different, because of the, the latest movie with the multiverse, there were different Spider-Men getting together and, you know, Spider-Gwen different versions of Spider-Man. They were doing the meme thing. I've got this cool picture of them all pointing at each other, but they were doing crossovers of Stranger Things with Spider-Man. That's so cool. I see that here. You've so got it's Steve. Like, it's, it's, it's and, this, uh, this is them and, doing the meme thing. I was like going oh down the escalator God. and saw them like replicate. So every time they would see a new Spider-Man they didn't know, they were like getting I a love it. and do the thing. I love so it. complete nerd fest, complete nerd fest. Um, great. But then, then something else happened. I love how you haven't changed your t-shirt t-shirt since the no, show. No, no, really I'm impressive. not. I'm never taking it off. I'm never washing it. Um, it's become a whole thing between me and my wife. <laughs> um, but but I'm meeting sure. Katie Sackoff, I'm gonna tell you what. Wow, dude, she's that's a nice amazing. lady. Um, amazing. I was so I, happy to see this. Now you know her, of course, from Battlestar Galactica. Most people know that she. Well, if you're an aficionado like me, you know that she's been in films like Oculus. She's she was in Twenty Four for a second. She's in a Netflix series, Another Life. But I, most people... Dude, she was in Star Wars. Well, I know. That's what I was about to say. So in the Q&A, I was so mad. In the Q&A, uh, everyone was lining up to ask questions about Bo-Katan. Yes, her, of course. Her time doing the Clone Wars. Did she like to do you know, voice voice acting or... And or you're being, like, I just want to talk about... Thing. I want to talk about... I want to talk about did if... Battlestar. So here was going to be my question. I got in, and here's the heartbreaking part. I get in line to do my question. The line is long. They cut me off. They cut off the line to two people before me. So I never got to ask the question. So I'm going to ask the question right now. Here was my question. In the series, you know this, Battlestar Galactica. They okay, all right. Say, you you ask the question, and I'll answer as if I'm her. How's that sound? Okay, that, that's cool. Okay, all right, all right. Let's so do this. so right. here's what I was going to ask. Now, in Battlestar Galactica, the, the catchphrase was, all this has happened before and it will happen again. Cause it was meant to say that like in the cosmos, you know, time and mm -hmm. things repeat. Yeah. So my question was if you fast forward another 150,000 years, like they did in the finale and they showed, you know, Gaius Baltar and number six together in the future. If she was in the future, if Starbuck was in the future, would, and she had to choose again, would she choose her true love, Leah Dama, or would she choose Anders again? Well, Ryan, what I'd like to say is I'm really glad you asked this question. <laughs> First of all, I want to congratulate you on looking so sexy in that shirt. Right. Second of all, I just want to tell you it's a fucking TV show, and I have no idea what the right answer is. So maybe you should just chill out and get a life. <sighs> anyway, thanks for coming to the show, and uh, I'll be signing <laughs> headshots or $5 a pop, and uh, anyway, so, so we'll see how it goes. Thanks, Ryan! <laughs> That's probably the right answer, because Was that, was honestly, that an excellent Katie Sackhoff so imitation? I feel like it was really One of the accurate. questions that somebody did ask that was cool was like, which role did she appreciate? You know, you get the typical, what role did you like the best? And she was like, every role comes at the time when you need it. And when you're capable of it, she said she wasn't capable of doing Starbuck again because it was so emotionally and angsty and draining that she didn't know if she could like channel that same energy at her age now. But which I thought was neat. But anyway, check this out, dude. I got a quote signed in my Battlestar Galactica book. Oh, my God. Karathrace Katie Sackoff, you're such a nice, powerful ray of light. She's yeah. probably like. Uh, can you add this guy to my list? Yeah, I'm on uh, a black Creepy list stalkers. Somewhere. Yeah, I'm you're on, on the I'm stalker on, list. I might be on the list. But, you know, she be. signed my No, dude, I know book. this is a big deal for you, and that's dude, awesome. Dude, the Shipyards the book Viper is awesome. page, please. Well, yeah. So that's awesome. It's a quote. I, I wasn't going to do this so say we all thing that everybody wants to hear, but, you know, that's what it is. All right, here, I'll read the quote in her voice again because my 
Oh, you will? Okay. My imitation of her is so go. good. I think you should let me do that. Go for Kara it. Kara Thrice and her special destiny sounds like a bad cover band name. Ha ha ha. Katie, sack <laughs> off. Starbuck. Wow, that was, that was really excellent. good. Like, I am really that channeling really, her. You, you may have a second career. Wow. As just like this. a I'm celebrity not, sure. impersonator. All right. Wow. Let's talk about Star Wars again, because I got to meet Carrie Jones as well. I don't know if you know who that, do you know who Carrie Jones is? Mm, I don't think All so. Right. So Carrie Jones started out working in, I guess, makeup and effects. I might not be a hundred percent accurate. I sat in on a panel where, or Q and a, where he was talking about how he was a super Star Wars nerd growing up. He started working with Greg Nicotero and he was actually one of the people who dressed up like a zombie with all the effects to pitch the walking dead to AMC. Uh, and uh, he's been working wow. behind, behind the scenes as an actor on that show for 12 years. Then he got tapped through their connection to work as a predator in the, uh, the predators reboot that had uh, Adrian Brody and the whole cast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Planet. Yeah. Predators, so he yep. would, you know how it was like the big predators versus the normal predators. Yes. He was the big freaking predator. Oh, that's how um, most people describe me sometimes. Cool. Big freaking predator. Big freaking predator. <laughs> um, I'll yeah. eat you. And so, and then he got a phone call to be this guy. I don't know if oh, you recognize him. Oh, wow. So he got to be his lifelong dream. So here was how it all tied together, which was touching, not only touching for him, but it had a connection to me, is that he said that, you know, the first well, film... Counts. First film he all ever saw was his father taking him like when he was six years old to see Empire Strikes Back. And he was trying to figure, you know, he got enamored with the effects and his favorite character was Chewbacca. <laughs> so full circle. Now he is. Wait, no, no, dude, you can't keep going. You have to do a Chewbacca imitation. <laughs> <laughs> Cranston. Cranston. So he, now he's Chris man. He, um, I don't know, dude. It was just, it was, it was cool. It was touching. It was uh, cool to hear that story. I love that. Yeah, that's um, like when I went to a an event and saw Peter Weller, and he did the voice of Optimus Prime, and I started crying. It was very emotionally overwhelming. It was a little embarrassing, but I don't care. And uh, it was really cool. And the other guy, I forget his name, and I should know his name, Fred Welker, <laughs> did the voice of Megatron and did Starscream. And I was like, this is the greatest moment of my life. Yes. And in that moment, I realized it was true, and I felt very sad about my life. But the important, important point here is that Optimus Prime is our Lord and Savior. Anyway, I'm glad you oh, had fun at okay. GalaxyCon, okay. man. Okay. Well, I really Moth, am. Moth Gideon was there as well. Gus Fring. I re so here's the story that I. This is the last thing I'll say. Okay. We're. I'm walking up the street the first night to go find some barbecue. Uh, with my buddy Yancey, who uh, attended with me. Yancey, I know Yancey. Um, he, we, I literally almost like bumped shoulders with Giancarlo on the street and he's wearing like a, a, like a burgundy smoking jacket. He, yeah. He was going the other way. I didn't recognize him and it like clicked oh, with shit, me like 10 steps wild. away. I turn and I'm like, Hey, we should ask him to go eat barbecue. And he started walking faster. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a stalker and then yes he's yes he's like no man he didn't see you and then I, I we walk a few more steps i turn around he gets to the corner he turns around we lock eyes and i'm like yeah okay see ya <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but dude his session Probably was like dick so dick. inspiring i can't really even, i can't I, like it was mind blowing. that's amazing he, he should have a he's got a second career as a motivation motivational speaker for sure wow all right, let's talk about speaking of Predator. Predator turns 35, dude. 35, man. Now, this is one of those films where when it when it comes on, whether it's like I'm scrolling and looking for something to watch on Netflix or Hulu or Paramount Plus or Disney Plus or you got to watch it. HBO Max or wherever. Where, if I see it, I'm going to watch it. But if it like, happens to just be on TV and being aired live, it's like Hunt for Red October. I'm going to watch it. Yep. And it's just one of those movies where I can quote almost the whole thing. I have literally cosplayed Dutch. My name when I play video games with my friends is Dutch, which is nerdy, but literally I have the cigar, the whole outfit, everything. Oh, now, I, not that I wear. I mean, my character's in Ghost Recon Wildlands and, or Breakpoint. And um, 
the soundtrack is amazing. It's just it, the whole thing is a great is a great movie, and I now realize how old I am because it just turned thirty five years old. Yeah, I didn't think it was thirty five, but then again, you think about you know what they all look like in that. I mean, we're talking about there's some really heavy hitters in that film. Oh man. Um, and 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 you know, so I mean, the quotes like "I'm gonna have me some fun. If it bleeds, we can kill it." Of course, one of the stories I love is when uh they were making the movie and they asked i think it's um milnius or whoever it was that directed it i forgot off the top of my head excuse me but they asked and it's in the, the article i shared with you and i shared it on twitter as well but they asked this guy they're like you know we need more more guns more bullets more shooting like how can you make this movie more exciting he was like oh that's what you want i'll give you the greatest gun scene in the history of movies and of course he <laughs> delivered the scene with the minigun where you know the guy yells contact and it's just like Pfft, and they all yes. start firing and it's just yep. this epic scene i remember seeing that as a kid and being like what the fuck like th that's insane and it and then, it, and then you oh were like I and then you were like i want to be that one day and then that i wanted to be that there you go that's dutch <laughs> right there wow dude you just busted that out but man i absolutely love predator it, it it's just a great movie i actually also like predator 2 uh and one of the reasons i like it is because you know, something that frustrates me at times about Star Trek and Star Wars is they're constantly recirculating the same people, but it's this same massive time, yeah. universe, yeah. right? I mean, why are we always seeing Kirk and Spock and Spock and Kirk or Spock and someone else and it's all in Pike or, and or it's another the version of them trying to do another version of this or just people. another version of it, right? And it's the same thing in Star Wars. It's like always a Skywalker, always a Palpatine. And it's just like, you know what? There's supposed to be this endless universe. And I know we're going to talk about Andor, which I'm excited about. Yep. And so it's cool to mix in elements, but it's when it's just a constant rehashing, it gets old. And, you know, if, especially when you think about like Star Trek, when they did Voyager, totally different crew, totally different ship, yep. totally worked. Totally right. And worked. so what I love about Loved Predator it. is the first movie takes place in the jungles. Second movie takes place in Los Angeles. Like it was like totally different. Um, and I, granted, it's like an urban jungle, but still it was it was. Uh, it was, these are just these are good movies and i've and enjoyed of course, all the films we've got prey I've, coming. you know what i've enjoyed the the predator versus alien films i know a lot of people you know uh, that has taken on a life of its own and it, it started in comic books it was really cool that is cool you're cool ryan Boyles, yeah baby you're cool buddy but look, cool. Predator turns thirty-five. It's John McTiernan, by the way. John McTiernan, and thank you. Is, I, that's that's what I he meant. He is John a McTiernan. prolific, prolific. Thank like you. you should, if you don't know who John McTiernan is, well, I mean, go like you could name off some really heavy hitting action movies outside of Predator. Yeah, that he's been a part well, of. Well, and and actually, there's another John McTiernan jungle movie, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it, that I like called Medicine Man, a movie. Yeah, Sean Connery true. and. Uh, um lorraine brocco um a movie most people don't know haven't seen it and i i think it's a really good movie we need a um, segment called weeks in suggests a movie you haven't you need to watch 20 times <laughs> that is a fucking great idea well that is cool well look uh speaking of new movies uh, let's talk about this new movie coming out called. Well, it came out today, right? Pray. Yeah. Well, I well, I think it's it, it's on streaming today, and this yeah. is the point that I'm trying to make, which is, um, you know, it, it's another example of where they're taking the same concept but deploying it in a totally different place. I mean, this is like in Native Native American times, hundreds of yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's in the 1700s, and I think. With the Comanche, like Comanche like, Indians, I want to say. That's uh, awesome. Yes. You know, but think about what they could have done. They could have said, let's just make a movie where it's like old Arnold. You know, we'll, re we'll just, re he's got to go back into the jungle. Everybody will love it. And it's like, yeah. no, we don't need that. And I, and I love the fact that. Well, that... the early word, I don't know. I'm, I'm wanting to like pop some popcorn and order pizza and watch this tonight because I'm hearing really good things about it. I've heard that it's as good as the original and going back to the roots of how, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. That might be marketing hype, but I'm, I'm excited to see a new Predator film, period. Because I, I went back and rewatched Predators after meeting Carrie this week. And I actually, I liked it. I liked it watching it the second time around because it had that, it had a lot of cues back to the original movie with like the sounds and, and like the Predators had like yeah. kept the voice 
they had like kept the voice clips where they were yes. using to, to like bait people. Yeah. And then they had a throwback to the music from the helicopter in the original as the uh-huh. nice. closing theme and stuff, um, which I can appreciate when it's not so heavy, heavy handed. Um, it, 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 it was a good film. And so I've got high hopes for prey. Oh, that sounds great, Ryan. This is Katie Sackoff again. I can't wait to like. Maybe, that is maybe, not how she sounds. All right? Maybe we could like make out during. She's the never coming on the show if you want. keep doing this. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Pray, watch it, folks. Let us know what you think. Um, let's talk about. It's not that pray, but still. Why don't we talk about? Oh, I just got a. I didn't show the picture. I need to show that real quick. How cool! Is yeah, that? look at that. That's so cool. I just and I, look at the subtle yeah. of the of the target the laser targeting in the background there. Oh, so cool! So cool. All uh-huh. right, let's talk about Star Wars again. Again, Andor. I'm yeah. not even going to put up the visuals, but I just want to say we keep getting tagged for like having copyrighted material in our show. Um, but I'm going to just save you. Everyone should watch this because to me the trailer showed like what I was hoping that the scale and the cool factor and the storytelling, what I was hoping a couple of the previous series should have delivered on and maybe didn't deliver as much on as I hoped uh, the sheer scale of just forming the rebel Alliance fomenting the rebellion. Like it just, it, it makes me feel like I'm going to watch a whole series about rogue one. And that's really exciting to me. Yeah, that's that's that was my take on it as well. Is it looked like, you know, you've got sort of the Star Wars universe, and then you've got the Rogue One universe, and yes. and that's what this felt. And I like. want to live in that universe. <laughs> and and arguably, I still think that's one of the best movies of the entire. It's one of the best pieces of content from the entire franchise, and I'm really excited about this. It looks great. It. Uh, it just, it, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Well, so, the political tone, I like when the, shows. Well, they said, movies, they said it's going to be a take you know, on the Trumpian era, which is right. cool. Like, I'm for So tying films, I think entertainment, when it's a reflection of current events or current political climate or things of that nature, that's why Battlestar Galactica was so relevant at the time is it was a reflection of the Bush era and terrorism and, and yeah, xen- Ryan, xenophobia, you all that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. important that you know. So that. and or same thing. I think it's showing the rise of fascism yes. and how do you break it down from yep. the ground up. So it's gonna yep. be cool. And I think a lot of Bothans are gonna die in this series. <laughs> and I'm on, I want to Are we gonna see finally it. see a Bothan spy? We're gonna we're gonna see a Bothan spy right. and they're gonna die. All right. Bothan right. spy. Look gonna I, die. I don't know how this happened, but somehow you've been assigned like three rants of the week or something. So I'm going to go ahead and let you get into the first one. All right. Your Gen X POV on the guardians of the galaxy. So I watched guardians of the galaxy again recently. And by the way, I'd like to point out that James Gunn himself liked this tweet. I just, I I don't know if you know, I don't know if you know what, wait, no, you click on, click on likes and you'll see that he liked it. Come on. I don't click on likes and you'll see he liked it. Watch. I don't believe you. All right. I'm checking. Keep going. Checking. Keep going. Checking. Oh, Keep Ryan going. liked it. Uh, Wyatt liked it. Keep going. Uh, what? Melissa liked it. James Gunn. Holy shit, dude. Told you. Wow. So here's my right. theory on this movie. So in this movie, there are a lot of complicated relationships, right? He they he talks about he doesn't have a family. You know, obviously, at one point we find out his father was a real jerk. You know, his mother died of cancer. Uh, we see, I don't know why I'm on camera by myself, but it's pretty funny. Um, you know, they're all standing in a circle talking about like how their friends and their family and all this stuff. And I started to realize that I think one of the reasons this movie resonates besides guardians, besides the whole Marvel cinematic universe is the fact that like our generation struggles mightily with family relationships and cancer, right? Cancer also is also a big thing, um, obviously, in our society because, well, it's a fucking killer. <laughs> and it killed his mom. So, uh, but the whole... Ryan, can you take me off full screen? It's so embarrassing. I, I, I like to be on camera with you, bro. Unless it's an, unless it's an official rant of the week. You got to give me a second to build into it. Okay, be on a platform. I'm sorry. You know? But anyway, okay, I'm serious about this. So my, my, my take is that one of the reasons Guardians of the Galaxy resonates so much with Gen X, you know, in particular, is because our family relationships are so strained and so 
it, it's kind of a thing for our generation that yep. it, it, we have kind of weak sauce family relationships. So and like I think the last, and I'm talking weeks. like with parents or like yes. with siblings or yes. I don't mean like nuclear family. Right. And so I really think that there's a huge undertone about relationships and family in that and friendships, by the way, um, in that film. And I just kind of looked at it in a different way. When I first saw it, I was like, I love this action movie. I think rockets the best. And then I watched it again, you know, a few more times and just really enjoyed it. But then this, after a while watching a film over and over, I start to really study different parts of it. And I really paid attention this time. And I tweeted that out. And the important thing is that James Gunn liked my tweet and I am now uh, incredibly famous. You're now a Marvel influencer. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Marvel fluencer. Marvel, Marvel fluids. Okay. A Marv, a Marv fluencer. Marvel fluencer. Well, I'm still just a Berlin fluencer. I'll, sit over here in the corner someday you're going to produce that video now nobody watching knows what we're talking about but ryan and i were in berlin one time there's going to be and we captured a ton of ridiculous footage of us being silly and doing all kinds of stuff and we made the joke that we were berlin fluencers and so (laughs) ryan was supposed to put together this video at one point we're even whispering in the camera we're going like berlin fluencer and so we were doing all this stuff and there was supposed to be a video and it never happened but we know I still get the Someday. footage. Someday. We'll see. Do you really? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I got, shit, dude. I got plans, man. You got to bust that out. When's your birthday? You got to just surprise me, like some Christmas or something. What the hell is a Pong table? Yeah. So I had heard about this when it was kickstarted and came out. Now, for those of you who are retro gaming fans, for those of you who are old as shit like me, you probably were, you probably had Pong. So you probably had, oh, uh, like I actually started with a Magnavox Odyssey 3000, which is like Pong was all it had. And so uh, they, produ- they uh, I don't know who kickstarted it, but somebody produced this line Whoa. of these Pong coffee tables. That's insane. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's, it's not a screen. Those things actually move. Oh, that's and cool. so on the sides there, and in fact, um, so is it like an air table, kind of or no? Yeah, sort of, sort of. But and there's like LED lights, so those those sides fold down, and the controls are there. The wheels, it's very addictive to play. It's really hard. Wow. You got to get into the groove. But it's not a digital screen. It's a physical pong. And I I found this at a vacation house up in new hampshire we, we walked in and it was just sitting there and literally it was like holy cow there i i've never seen one and let me tell you folks if you dreamed about having one of these it's even better than you could have imagined so you screwed your life up you lost out like it's over and i feel bad for you because now you will never get to experience the magic that is the pong table uh but a marvel fluencer like me i have experienced right it. right, right. Okay, can we talk about? You, you couldn't care less about my pong table. I, I like it's fine. Pong. No, no, no. Just, it's fine. Just, it's fine. I, have too I many... see how it is with you. Look, you want everybody to pay no, attention no, no, to your no, Galaxy Con no, shit, no, 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 no. but you don't want to pay attention to my pong That's table. Love. That's not it. I, I look at I'll this. And I, 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 my head slider. automatically goes to how is it constructed and what are the physics and what are the engineering. And well, we would, actually, it's funny you we, say that because it's yeah. loud. It's like woo, woo, woo when it moves. So I would spend like forty-five minutes trying to take it apart and put it back together. Dude, you would totally love it. It, it, it is a it is an engineer's dream because it's like how, and and it even like when a point happens, it like immediately comes up and it's like woo, and it comes back up in like a second, and it's on top of the thing, and then you serve it. And so the motion of it is 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 really cool to watch. Motion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. What's next? You know what we're going to talk about? I have a new What's segment. A terrible show. I don't I know why new, people watch I have a it. new segment. We're going to call WB Discovery Plus Corporate Synergy Ooh. and Content Funnels. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And I just uh-huh. I just want to start with a few slides. <sighs> I've only got 47 slides. Um, wow. I, I promise I'll get through them really quick, and then I'll take questions at the end, okay? Wow. So... That's There's amazing. a streaming business model, uh huh, uh huh, and and what you have here is okay. you have this this what I call glob or blob of uh-huh. content, a, a globe, if you will, a globe of content, if you will. Mm-hmm. And what you want to do is you want to get some arrows, yep. you want to get okay. some vectors headed towards like this. the. Yep. There's some like there's this, some actually. streams that come out of the vacuum tubes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to get your content in those yep. streams, yeah, so that the kids can okay. see it 
on their fascinating on their iPod touches. Incre- I got I got I got to tell you, Ryan. In the entire history of business presentations, this may be the greatest chart. Yeah. Ever created. Yeah. I mean, it's and simple. Clearly, it's elegant. Clearly, it's this powerful. Is how you Nobody would have ever thought of this. And this is how you succeed at both it? movies. Look, you can succeed at both movies and TV. That's the and best TV. Part. And, you know, most people think you can only succeed at one. Right. It's, it's either movies or TV. It, it can't possibly be both. But in this business model. It's both. I'm going to have right. to go ahead and request that you give me a hashtag business face. Ready? Let's put on our business faces. Let's go because this is so amazing. In three, two, one, business face. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Folks, we're, we're, we're like a couple of bosses here. That's yeah, great. I, I want to know. Uh, I want everyone who's watching to send in your example of the best business yes. face you can come up with. Now, that's not all, Graham. I just want you to know that um, HBO like Max is from Mars and Discovery oh. Plus is from Venus. Oh, well, that I explains you, I don't know why if you knew I don't this. know I don't Discovery know you Plus because I'm not a woman. So that makes sense. So when we push them together. so Did they really put this out? They're going to put this together in a single platform. It's only going to take oh probably God. 24 to 36 months to roll this out globally to the hyper mega global thing. What is a g- but I'm ger- telling you right ger- now ger- genre dom. We're gonna be that able sounds to like a sex no, thing. Graham, here's the best part. You're gonna be able Ryan, to lean you in like genre doms. I bet you and do. you're gonna lean back. And when you lean back, you're gonna I get like your genre, genre your genre dom is gonna take care of all your needs. Yeah, I bet if you lean back, you're gonna get a genre dom. Now, here's the thing is this is oh a perfect example of crap created by men who don't know what they're talking about. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I mean, fandom's fine, but genre doms, come on. That's well, I just want to give a shout thing. out to our boy, Alex uh, Zalbin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but he did know. some excellent, excellent, excellent coverage of the earnings call with the new WB Discovery, I guess is what they're calling it. Um, but dude, it's insanity. Uh it's really insanity. So there's a lot of people worried, of course, and we won't get into it. We'll talk about it as things. What develop. the hell is the 90 day fiance universe? Oh, that's, that's, that's what they've, re- they, they've replaced the Snyderverse with the 90 day fiance. What does that universe. even mean? There's a whole genre of TV shows around. Excuse me, a, Ryan, a genre dom, please. Use yeah. The right a genre dom, if you will, uh, around the fact that if you, want to get married you can just pick somebody off the hyper mega global internet in another country oh. and then this tv show will throw you into a taped engagement for 90 days and hilarity ensues and hopefully bliss cool. and, and love I'm really and, excited by all of this all those next things. yep that's it man i, I can't stand it i can't that's show crap. you anymore we got to get rid of this um, what I do want to get into is your show idea of the week. Let's talk okay. about some real quick. Are you ready? I'm ready for my pitch. I'm Let's ready for it. my pitch. Folks, I don't know if you know this, but I am a genius, certified actually, at creating ideas for shows. Now, scroll down, Ryan, if you don't mind. Yes, my sir. idea for this Ooh. show came when I was inspired by seeing this photograph. Now, I've also actually, this is also based on a dream that I had that took place at Hatshepsut's temple. Very oh. weird dream. Had it a while ago. Let's my see. idea is a history professor, an uh, ancient history professor at MIT, just finds out that a student is working on developing a portal where they can move back and forth through time. And these two end up passing through the portal and appearing at Hatshepsut's temple in the middle of a ceremony where they are immediately mistaken for gods. Now, it turns out the portal and they didn't know this, but the portal will not reopen for seven days. So my idea is that this is a limited series of seven episodes. Each episode takes place on a different day. And because they appear in the middle of this ceremony and everybody's there, including Queen Hatshepsut, they interpret that as they must be gods. So they have to spend the whole seven days trying to hide the truth that they're actually people from the future because they don't want to contaminate the timeline. And they know that if they're found out, they could be you know, held as heretics or killed. And here's the twist. Of course, Hatshepsut 
was one of the very few female pharaohs. She's a very powerful woman. Both the professor and the student are also women. And so my possible title for the show is Regents, right? Because that's nice. Yeah, like like, right, right. I like it. So I think this could be a really cool series. Is this on the level of some of my previous amazing ideas? Maybe not. I think it could be. I think, I think it, could, it could be. be. I think you know what? Be. You know what this reminds me of is I loved I love Stargate, first of all. So it gives me some Stargate vibes. A little bit it, of Stargate vibes. Except it's time. But there is the time element, which I love. And then... Did you used to watch a show? I think it was on Sci Fi called uh, Warehouse 13. Yes. I guess yeah, it's totally what I was thinking of when I was you going could, for You this. could get some vibes. And by the yeah, way, this Brendan, is like Stargate meets Warehouse 13. Brendan Fraser was at GalaxyCon. I failed to mention this. He, he might want to be involved as a consultant and or an actor. I don't know. I like that. This is awesome. I love, I love these because it's not just you're on a spaceship and have a MacGuffin. Right. So good, 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 good. All right. What else are we got to talk about? I think that, I don't know. Is that I it? I think we got one more. Ooh. One more. By the way, there is just one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. One more show. It's yeah. called A Cell Phone. Huh? Wait, no, <laughs> sorry. Really? Uh, okay. Let's get into, oh, crap. Oh. You know what time it is. Oh. Oh, it's boy. time for for my rant now it's my now it's official now it really is my rant of the week. so okay. do i have permission to go off camera uh yeah but let me build up to this a little bit okay, so little bit. ryan i don't know if you know this i don't know if we've ever talked about it this may um, be breaking news to you this may be something we've been friends oh? for a long time you're about yeah. to learn something new about me okay i like the movie tron get out of here uh, it's true what look for my money mm, it doesn't get better than Tron, I celebrate the man's entire catalog. And the thing is, is that I rewatch these movies a lot. And I just yep. recently rewatched Tron Legacy, like just the other night. And there's a scene in Tron, like, okay, now you can put me on full screen. I don't need you anymore. All right. Oh, there you go. Let's that is the actual scene. So there's this scene where Sam steals his father, Kevin Flynn, custom made NCOM model 786 light cycle. Yes. I have a model of it right here. And he steals it, and like 30 seconds later in the movie, he just gives it away to this like homeless program or whatever. And it really infuriated me. This is the fastest thing in the grid, custom made by his father. I understand he did it as a distraction, but like it didn't work. They traced it back to the point of origin and created even more problems with Clue. So like I have a lot of problems with this. Like I'm really upset about this. And here's my theory on this. I think there's a deleted scene. I think something's missing that justifies that decision a little more, that helps it make sense. Because if he was just going to the end of line club to find Zeus and hang out with Jem, why did he, why didn't he just take the light runner? Why didn't he just take the bike and then go back and get his dad? Like what, what, what was with the whole problem around that? So I, look, it just really upsets me that like this thing is amazing right? The fastest thing on the grid. And his kid just took it and stole it. This is a terrible rant of the week. I'm really embarrassed now. I'm sorry. Can you take me off full screen? This is awful. Uh, what? But I know you know I'm right, because can you imagine if your no, son you are took, right. like, I just if, let's think, imagine you had some awesome car, or I just think my kid respect, stole my my respect, ATV and just think, like, gave it to somebody? Look, the moral of the story, and I'm going to tie it back to my personal life, um, it's horrible. respect your dad's hardware when it's awesome. It, yeah, like what the what the so fuck, my son, bro? my son Ian, who's done our uh, our rock and roll intro a few times, he closed the garage door on our on the gate of our brand new Honda CRV and put a big wing into it, man. So, uh, what what's the name of the adoption agency he's hanging out at now? Because oh, like, he's, he's he's out, out. he's out, he's out, dude, he's out. He's I'm out. telling we you changed, right now, if we I was changed Kevin Flynn, the locks, if I was Kevin Flynn and my son. Sam stole my NCOM model 786 light cycle, arguably, again, the coolest thing in any Tron franchise, and just stole it and gave it away to somebody. I'm telling you right now, I'd be like, hey, Clue, he's right there. Right. Like, just take him and de-res him. I'm done with him. Yep, yep. I am that shallow. I, I Well, I, it, comes, I am... it comes from your, your stern uh, 
you know, bootstrap. No, it comes Gen from my, uh, my, uh, my raising of my silent generation parents who I'm taught saying. me that Gen materialistic goods are more important than love. Well, that's true. And too. that's why that's you want more. You don't You're just want a material girl living I, in a material I, world. Okay. I'm just a material girl <laughs> living in a material world. All right. Material that's our show, world. ladies and gents. And I am a material Woo! girl. I want to let Why did you do this to me? Why do you have me singing Madonna well, now? I just had to give you <sighs> one little earworm to uh, see you off. Okay, so you, again, for those nice, of you who are in the jungles, happy or weekend. perhaps you're in Los Angeles, or perhaps you're in 1700s America, maybe you're at the beach, your freckles yep. are coming out, you're looking yep, fantastic. Yep. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, we love you, and yep. we thank you for watching, and you tolerate a lot of our bullshit. Send and, us your business uh, face. Send us your business face. Ryan, should, just, we fi should we finish this show with a couple of business faces? I think we can, but I just have one more thing to say, and that is uh, frack yeah, weeks in, baby. Oh, Woo! God. You're totally on a stalker list. I know, right? I'm totally banned. All right, let's do business face, everybody. Ready? Business face. Here we go. <laughs>